All right, the markets are standing by for testimony from former FBI Director James Comey. And here now is Jim Cramer to break it all down. Jim, the market reaction from all this? Yeah, look, it, it's difficult. Um, it's difficult because what happens is, is that you always have to frame this in the confines of length of time that will go on, not necessarily because it's a Republican Congress, what will ultimately happen to Trump uh, at, politically, but his agenda. And his agenda, uh, which is tax cuts, which is deregulation, which is repatriation, is so far out of people's heads now. I mean, remember, this is supposed to be infrastructure week. I mean, think about that. We're supposed to be buying pent air off of, uh, of water in Xylem. We are so far removed from that. Uh, Comey, uh, no Comey, he's a uh, very uh, confident fella, uh, can pretty much uh, spin the tail uh, that it, it will make it so that we're not going to hear about, uh, about tax relief for a long time. And that's going to be problematic for all but the 15 stocks that I mentioned in Real Money yesterday and their ilk, which are the stocks that have of companies that have secular growth, regardless of what happens in Washington. That's quite different from buying companies that are uh, directly levered to uh, tax code changes. But at the same time, let's not forget that we had Draghi speak this morning, mm. where you just simply have to understand that the Europeans have to buy our bonds. Mm. So don't freak out that rates are so low. We will get a rate hike next week, and the banks are acting better for the second day in a row. That's because, again, separate from Comey, there are positives lurking. Mm. So yes, Comey is going to be a drag on the Trump agenda, but he is irrelevant to high growth, and he is irrelevant to higher rates. And also, aside from Comey, you're reviving candies, as you write in Real Money. I just think that people have to recognize, I'm bringing back candies. Now, why did I bring them back? And this is, uh, we're talking about, uh, you can, I just, I refer people to the article. I want them yes. to do it. But this is about the notion of growth transcending any moments in time. And that what people, I, I, I'm going back to that only to show that if you stay in touch, you buy and you do homework. Mm -hmm. And you recognize that if somebody a company's growth slows down, as was the case with the E in their Express Scripts, fight with their largest client. If the company is a little more faddish, that's the case of the D in there, which is Deckers and Uggs, then you have to pull back from those. But overall, the growth, even with two stinkers, the growth far exceeded the S&P. And that's a lesson for Fang, because I have had more Fang detractors than I've ever seen. New York Times, will you give me a break? Come on, I came up with Fang. Um, I have seen so many detractors about growth, and they're missing the whole point, which is that stocks are bought for growth. Now, we do want yield. I like Magellan Midstream. Why? Because it yields five. But I do, and I do like the typical stocks that yield three, four. But what people buy stocks for at the mutual fund level is growth. And growth can transcend a lot of transgressions. We're watching growth go higher because the transgressions of Washington are playing out. All right, for more on Candies, realmoney.com. Thank you. Jim, I also want to talk about Nordstrom potentially looking to go private. Yeah, this is very big. I mean, I know the Nordstrom followed it for a long time. Interviewed uh, Bruce Nordstrom, who's the driver, is 15%. Nordstrom has long felt and has always uh, traced down. The last conference call was not about this. The notion we have all profitable stores, the notion that we have spent a lot of money on e-commerce, the notion that we're ready to take on Amazon, the notion that our customer service is still good, the notion that we have a long-term game plan for uh, uh, off-price, which is the rack, and where I come back and just say, this is, they're mad as hell and they're not gonna take it anymore. It's a family-run business in the end and they're mad as hell that people do not give them any credit for what they've done. I think this deal will happen. Uh, I don't know the price. Uh, I also, often also think that maybe that's hubris. Maybe they shouldn't do the deal, but that's not up to me. Um, if I own Nordstrom, I would sell a quarter. Um, but I think I'd let the rest run for a couple days. Uh, ultimately, probably want to have a half on maybe a week from now. Why? Because Bruce Nordstrom owns 15% of the company, and he wants this deal done, according to my sources. Mm. Okay, and then on that note, we also wanted to recap your analysis of Kohl's on Mad Dash. Now, Kohl's, it's funny. Uh, I have been saying that Kohl's should not have gone down with Macy's. Uh, there is a fantastic piece in the street today, an interview with the former CEO of Sears Canada about how Eddie Lampert wrecks Sears. 
Uh, and in it, he says that Kohl's overextended itself. I disagree with that. I think Kohl's has preserved its balance sheet. It bought back, it had 270 million shares five years ago. Now it's 170 million. It's a very active buyback right now. It's got a 6% yield and it has a fantastic rock solid balance sheet. Now, I think that they're conservatively run and they would not want to do this go private. But again, this is just talk, speaking to the idea, have we gotten too negative on the banks? Have we gotten too negative on retail? Those are the two areas other than oil. And I believe, by the way, and I'm saying this, and I will talk about this next week, on our conference call with Action Alerts people on Wednesday at 12 o'clock, that oil at 43 is beginning to represent some uh, a bit of a buy. And now why is that? Because at 43, they will start capping the wells at the Permian that they have the drilled. So even though I still expect the Baker Hughes rig count to go up, I can make and craft a case that oil stocks will begin to bottom right here. We have told people no, 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 even though we have exposure to definitely too much. But I feel that we are getting to that level. Carly Garner, who has been dead right, real money, fantastic technician, says 43 is probably it. And I am saying 45, 43, not that much different. Stocks could bottom ahead. So when I'm looking at them, crafting a thesis that there are the three most hated groups, oil, financials, retail, attempting to stabilize. That's, of course, different from what I said yesterday with the 15 growth stocks. Attempting to stabilize would be a trade. The 15 growth stocks are not a trade. They're investments. All right, we can't wait for that action alert. It's called next week. Yeah, and you know, look, I put a huge amount in it. I'm also going to talk about Trump, some personal experiences with Trump, huh. uh, and, and the notion of, given those personal experiences, how you have to be a little more flexible in what you might own. And I'm going to save that for the call so people sign up. And that's, is it a tease? I spend so much time on the call. All I can tell you is, is that I'm doing it in the same um, intent that I have when I ran my hedge fund. Although we're not running a hedge fund, the intent is the same personal, uh, interactive. Remember, we do have an unbelievable uh, mobile site too. Uh, and I am going to reveal some things that make me feel a little less certain about the market overall. Uh, some of it is reflected in your excellent round table yesterday. Congratulations, Thank Thank that was so fantastic. Much. These round tables, the features that we're bringing are really the pastiche. I go on Twitter and so often people say, well, Jim, what do you think of X? What do you think? Well, I mean, the round tables, uh, the action alerts bulletins and, and our, 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 our calls, once a month calls, these questions are answered repeatedly and we can't just continually respond on Twitter, 140 characters, when we can go an expansive round table, an expansive uh, interchange with our, uh, uh, with our subscribers and hopefully new subscribers and our endless bulletins. Why? Because we know what you want and we want you want to hear us on oil you want to hear us on banks and you certainly want to hear us on retail those are three areas that i think are getting oversold and the nordstrom is a classic example of how the family says we're too oversold all right jim staying with retail for just a moment we have the alibaba investor day you know look alibaba i did a piece for real you know, look i've been saying that there's uh they have fang there too it's the Chinese, it's the red fang, we call it. And um, Alibaba, I interviewed uh, Sai, who's the key man, um, last, last uh, fall for uh, Delivering Alpha, a great conference that CNBC puts on. And uh, it was rather amazing. I came in so skeptical. Uh, I had probably 25 questions. It was just jackhammer, 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 because I didn't want to believe the stock was in the 90s. I have been a believer ever since, and I reiterate right now, even here, I am a believer. I don't tend to want to own Chinese stocks. That is American financials. They are scrubbed. I know I've gone back and forth with former contributor Herb Greenberg about this. All I can tell you is, is that I believe in Alibaba, and when you see that level of, uh, re, of, of accelerated revenue growth, 14% growth, revenue growth, that's a tell that this stock's not done. All right, and then finally, the Yahoo Verizon deal is about to close. More job cuts could yeah, be coming. Yeah, you know what? I, I don't know what Verizon, I don't know what Tim Armstrong's plan is. Uh, I, I do think that uh, Yahoo Finance um, needs to, it, which is such a popular site, has to get reinvigorated. I don't know where the job cuts are. Um, I don't think it moves the needle Verizon. I am consistent that I still like Verizon, but it's income. Uh, earlier we talked about, do you buy stocks for income? You can do that. I mean, we're doing MMP, I did it for AEP. But for the most part, you people want growth, which is why, again, I refer people to my Candies article, which talks about the notion of how growth can transcend anything uh, uh, but again, I am focused today also on the bounce back, oil, 
on finance, bounce back, and retail, and whether it's sustainable. You want to stay tuned to that. And of course, Wednesday, revealing some things about Trump that I think will really help people understand their portfolio. All right, we're looking forward to that. Jim Kramer, thank you so much thank as you. always. And for more information on the stocks Jim mentioned, please head back to thestreet.com.